All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to present you an insanely amazing application of Green's Theorem. And that was the application that sold my soul to Green's Theorem. Uh, you'll see why. So, first of all, let me remind you what Green's Theorem says. So suppose you have a curve, C, that encloses a region D. And again, this is all in two dimensions. Then it turns out, so Green's theorem, if you integrate the vector field PDX plus QDY, that gives you the double integral over D of what I call quixotic pi m's, DQ over DX minus DP over DY, DX DY which is amazing because essentially it turns a line integral over a curve into a double integral over the region inside the curve. So, and it's sort of an analog of the FTC. The FTC says the integral over derivative is just a function. So here the double integral over derivative should be just a regular integral, which we have here. Okay, why is that so useful here? So notice, if, suppose this thing equals to one, qx over, Q, dq over dx minus dp over dy equals to one, then what we get, we get the integral of p dx plus q dy equals to the double integral of one, over D, and that's just the area of D. So it would give you a very easy way of calculating the area of a region. And you may ask, well, what choices of P and Q give you this identity? There are many of them. Uh, you can choose a Q equals to X, P equals to zero, but also Q equals to zero, P equals to minus Y, they all satisfy this identity, but it turns out there's a balanced version that's more useful. Namely, just choose Q to be X over two, and P to be minus Y over two. So also uh, choose Q equals to X over two, P equals to minus Y, so minus Y over two. Then basically P DX plus Q DY, that just becomes minus one half Y DX plus one half X DY, and you can just write it as one half x dy minus y dx. And you will get the following fact, so the following formula. The area of your region is just one half of the line integral of x dy minus y dx. And this is the formula we'll use today. You'll see there's an amazing application of this. And by the way, there's an easy way to memorize this. This just becomes one half of the determinant of xy dx dy, which is just a formal thing. So uh, it doesn't make sense to do determinant of a differential, but Okay, and now, so let me tell you the amazing example. It has two parts. And again, it's a bit long, but please watch it till the end, because again, in the end, like everything just becomes, oh my God. So let's do the little prep. Let's find the line integral of x dy minus y dx, where c is just a line 
connecting two points, AD and CD. So it just, what this means is you have points A and B and C and D, and C is just a line connecting those two points. Well, how do you calculate line integrals? Very important, you parameterize things. Again, you want to start with A and B and end at C and D. The important thing here, at zero, this should be zero and this should be one. Sorry, uh, at zero, this should be one and this should be zero. So that's why it's good to put T here, to have zero at zero. And then here at one, this should be zero and this should be one. Well, in order to make this zero, you put one minus t. I like to think of it as an off and on switch. So initially, this should be on and this should be off. At the end, this should be off, this should be on. And you know, uh, t is between zero and one. And if you expand that out, you basically get a minus t a plus t c so a times plus t times c minus a and here you get a b plus t times d minus b d minus b like dab okay <laughs> anyway okay good we have this now let's calculate the line integral x dy minus y dx that's integral from 0 to 1 x of t y prime of t minus y of t x prime of t dt now let's use our formulas that equals integral from 0 to 1 a plus t c minus a d minus b minus b plus t d minus b times c minus a dt equals integral from 0 to 1 a times d minus b plus t c minus a d minus b and let's expand that out minus b c minus a minus t d minus b c minus a dt and notice how cool is that those two terms, they cancel out. So in fact, the t term cancels out, and you're left with integral from 0 to 1, ad minus ab minus bc plus ab. Bang, bang, another cancellation. And you're just left with the integral of ad minus bc from 0 to 1. So that's ad minus bc, and that's the determinant of abcd. How cool is that? So that integral turns out, you know, the line integral is just a determinant of A, B, C, D. And for now it's a miracle, but I'll tell you later why it makes sense. At least in terms of our areas. So x dy minus y dx is just A, B, C, D. Where C is the curve connecting A, B, and C, D. Here is why this is so important. Now, part B. Let's use that to find the area of any polygon. Any polygon? Yes, any polygon. At least in the counterclockwise direction. So find the area of the pentagon. Again, here I do the pentagon, it could be a 27 n gone, but it doesn't matter. With the following vertices, 3 minus 1, 4, 2, 1, 6, 
minus 3, 4, minus 2, minus 1. And again, it doesn't have, I don't think it has to be convex, you know, really works for anything, as long as the points are in a counterclockwise direction. That's the only requirement. Okay, so you get 3 minus 1, and then 4, 2, 1, 6, maybe here, a minus 3, 4, and let's say minus 2, minus 1. See, it doesn't have to be a regular polygon. It could be something like this kind of weird. Okay, and well, how do you calculate this? Well, notice uh, it's, this polygon is given by a closed curve C, so the area of the region inside, area of D, is again given by our formula, 1 half C, x dy minus y dx. But the point is, you curve, it's just the sum of a bunch of straight lines. So C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. So it's 1 half integral of C1, x dy minus y dx plus uh, C2, x dy minus y dx plus da 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 plus C5, x dy minus y dx. And here is now where our part A helps us. Because what is C1? It's just a line connecting A, B, and C, D. So it literally just becomes one half of the determinant of those two points. So here's like the most exciting part of the video, the thing I've been waiting for 10 minutes. So it's one half times. So you start, 3 minus 1, 4, 2. Then, 4, 2 becomes your new beginning. So, 4, 2, next, 1, 6, plus 1, 6, minus 3, 4, plus minus 3, 4, minus 2, minus 1, plus minus 2, minus 1, 3, one, three minus 1. And if you do that, you get 1 half times 10 plus 22 plus 22 plus 11 plus 5, and that's 34. <sighs> Kaboom! So you see, you can calculate the determinant of this, you know, using, uh, sorry, the area of this using any, um, you know, using just determinants. And by the way, there's a cool way of writing this as well. Uh, I found that out on the internet, but you can think of it as a ladder. So 3 minus 1, 4, 2, 1, 6, minus 3, 4, and then uh, minus 2, minus 1. And I think you repeat that one again. And then basically what it becomes, it becomes 3 times 2 plus 4 times 6 plus 1 times 4 plus 3 times minus 1 plus minus 2 times minus 1, minus this times this, this times this, this times this, this times this, this times this. So, because very messy, but it's just 3 times 2, uh, plus 4 times 0, plus 1 times 4, plus minus 3 times minus 1, plus minus 2 times minus 1, minus the anti-diagonals. 4 times minus 1, uh, 1 times 2, and then uh, minus 3 times 6, and then uh, minus 2 times 4, and 3 times minus 1, and remember the 1 half factor. That's what I call it. It's called the ladder determinant. So pretty, pretty neat. And by the way, before I end this, uh, two things. First of all, uh, there is, it turns out, a, a generalization to polyhedra. So it's not as easy, but it allows us also to find volumes of 3D polygons. 
And also, why in the world do we get determinants? Here's why. So again, take this polygon, something like that. You have AB and CD. Essentially what you're saying is that, again, suppose let's say the set, you know, zero, zero is in there. Essentially what you're saying is that um, the area of this polygon is just the sum of the areas of this triangle. And how do you find the area of a triangle? Strictly speaking, it's one half of the area of the uh, parallelogram but the area of the parallelogram is just A, B, C, D. Um, the determinant of A, B, C, D, and the orientation is right, so we get an uh, actual uh, that thing here. And, and therefore you get indeed one half times the determinant, which we have here. But this is so cool. It's just a determinant explosion. Like, Bomberman would be very proud of me. All right, so if you like this and you want to see more math and more awesomeness, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.